Hi, this is Heidi. Episode 68, Grace-Filled Relationships with Others. Life isn't a spectator sport. Success comes to those who show up every day with a pocket full of courage, grit, and a little sparkle. I'm glad you're here. Hello, hello. Happy Thanksgiving 2020. This episode will be released right before Thanksgiving of this year. I feel like in general, people have used 2020 to be really grateful for what they do have. We all have normal brains and emotions that have been frustrated, sad, worried, but everyone I talk to is also feeling so grateful for things that maybe seemed small before this pandemic but really are the big things. Now, if you want support, more tips, and a community to have a healthy holiday season, you want to be in my Facebook group, Lose Weight and Gain Confidence with Heidi. We have fun discussions and challenges going on in there. I do weekly quick video tips and tools to help you understand more of these concepts that I teach in the podcast and how they directly relate to our bodies and fueling them with the best food. I know weight can possibly be a loaded emotional topic for people, so it might not be for everyone, but I promise you that those loaded emotional stories you are carrying around, they can be rewritten, you guys. They can be put down. Body image, weight, and eating don't have to evoke or trigger strong emotions, but we'll get to that in future podcasts and specifically in my group coaching program. Today's episode is one I've been writing in my mind in small chunks for a while. Years ago, I listened to a fantastic talk by Brad Wilcox called His Grace is Sufficient, which opened my eyes and heart to the idea of grace, and I just love it. This talk, it has a religious message and I highly, highly recommend it. It's on YouTube. I listen to it a few times a year, but the message of grace or actually practicing grace is one I think applies in every relationship we have. Now, in a religious sense, grace is the gift given to us by a savior who suffered and died for our mistakes and shortcomings and humanness. It's a gift given without us asking for it, and it's given without us needing to earn it. It assumes our worthiness, if you want to use that word. We're worthy of that gift of grace just because we are, period. And it's a gift given out of love, not fear or shame or judgment. No strings are attached. No minimum amount is required. So how does this apply to our human relationships with other people? What is it? Is it forgiveness? Maybe, but not necessarily. Is it kindness? Sure. But we are not divine and perfect. So how do we give grace to other people? the way the Savior did to us. I think when we master this, which probably takes a lifetime, we are the ones who grow, change, and feel the increase in love, not the other people that we're traveling through humanity with. Now, first, let's remember our relationships with other people exist in our minds. Often we think relationships are what we do with someone, how often they call us, how often they see us how we feel around them? Do we send them Christmas or birthday cards? Are we family? Okay, now while all of those things can be important and influential, they are not the purest definition of a relationship with these people. Our relationship with another person only exists in our mind. It is made up of what we think about the person. I know some of you are scratching your heads, but think about this. I have relationships with Oprah or Reese Witherspoon, and I've never met them. They don't know me. Unfortunately, I don't hang out with them, but I think thoughts about them. That is my relationship with them. So whether or not you want to admit it, you have a relationship with both presidential candidates. You probably have lots of thoughts about both of them. Okay, we have relationships with people who have passed away. This is why we hear people say how connected they feel to a loved one who's died. They work on their thoughts with that person. They still maybe talk to that person or think about them. It's a beautiful way to remember when someone is physically gone, our thoughts about them include them in our lives. 
Okay, and there are three parts to a relationship. What I think about this other person, what they think about me, and what I think about myself. So I can control two of those things. I only can't control what another person thinks about me. And as I've taught you, what another person thinks about me is more about that person than it is about me. I only have control over what I think about other people and also what I think about myself. It's totally amazing how when we feel good about ourselves, when we love ourselves, we are able to love others more. When we find ourselves being judgmental and critical of others, it's a great yield sign to slow down and dig into where we are judging and criticizing others because we can't have one without the other. So how does grace play into our relationships? Okay, this started making a lot more sense to me when I saw a quote several months ago that stopped me in my tracks and now I have hanging in my office. Grace is having a relationship with someone's heart, not their behavior. So beautiful. I'm going to tell you that again. Grace is having a relationship with someone's heart not their behavior. Grace and our relationships are both in our mind. It's our thoughts. Okay, do our thoughts focus on what another person says or does, which may or may not meet our expectations of a person? Or are we able to think and build a relationship with this person, seeing the best in them, being able to overlook flaws, give forgiveness, think the best of them, see more than they even present to the world? Now, one of the ways we all see this is when someone passes away, especially if that was someone that people struggled to love and accept in life. Usually when someone passes on, everyone gathers and shares the best in this person. Suddenly, weaknesses and challenges are painted in this light that like that person needed them. There's like a new light kind of shown on that person. Our thoughts and emotions switch channels to much more grace-filled channels, which bring us love. This person who has died doesn't feel that love. Although the person is no longer there, the only thing that has changed is our new perspective, our new grace-filled lens, these new thoughts that we have about this person. And you know what? We don't have to wait for people to pass on for us to have this new emotion, to have these new thoughts, to have this new relationship with them. I think of it like this. Everyone we meet is like a glass and their behavior, the words they say, their kindness or insensitivities, everything we see with our physical eyes, they fill up the cup or the glass partially. The top of the cup is this level of expectation we have, an expectation we individually write and create and then judge the person by. So in life, we don't even know how another person judges us or what their expectations are. Another reason why it pays not to focus on what other people think about us and and really stay grounded in building our confidence. But we, as people seeing other people, we get to decide if we fill the space between where they act and then that top of the cup with thoughts filled with grace and acceptance and kindness Or do we fill that space with judgment and criticism? And how we interpret who this person is and that missing space makes up our relationship with them. As I think of that missing space, that gap between how people act and either their potential or our manufactured expectations, I see that gap being filled with either grace or judgment. I looked up a few definitions of grace. And a few of them just didn't sit that right with me. And I, you know what, one might even be from the Bible. But still, I read, grace is being kind even when other people don't deserve it. Now, that sounds fine. And I'm all about the kindness part. That's great. But the second part, when people don't deserve it, what does that mean? That means we're judging if another person is worthy of our acts of kindness or our kind thoughts. And this is where we get into trouble. We don't have the data to do the judging. Of course, we need a healthy amount of judgment in our minds to keep ourselves safe. We judge if a situation is physically safe or not. That's not the judgment that's causing us emotional problems. It's the judging if someone is good enough, 
if they should be doing something else, doing better, if they're doing it right. But it's our definition of right. So I want to give you several examples of how rethinking and refilling our mental cups for people changes us. How thinking more grace-filled thoughts changes the relationships that we have with people. Several years ago, I was on a committee with people and I dreaded participating. And the dread came from me judging the other people. I didn't like a whole lot about how they did things. I found ways in my head to criticize almost every part of their behavior. And I'd come home and I just hated how I felt. Now, here's the ironic part. I felt they were so judgmental and I was coming home and judging them for being so judgmental. I did several coaching models on this and I saw, oh, how funny. I'm mirroring them. I'm not much better. So I did some experiments. I made myself write down everything I liked and admired about these people, which actually was a lot. I made myself identify the ways it's better that they do it their way and how it's good that people don't always do it my way. Now, before the next meeting, I consciously said over and over, what can I learn from these committee members? I want to be open to learning and seeing the good in them. What can I learn from them? And it worked. Of course, little things did bug me, but my thoughts and focus went to filling the gaps with understanding that their perspectives were critical to our objectives. I focused on what they brought to the meetings, not what they lacked. And here's what's amazing. Because I focused on that and felt more love, I was different in those meetings. I contributed at a higher level. I was appreciating them, not judging. And that came from creating a relationship in my mind about them filled with compassion and understanding, not judgment and fault finding. Now in our homes, it's easy to have these crazy high expectations of our spouse, our children. The top of that cup is so high and their behaviors never come close to that. So how do we fill that gap? It's easy to point out what they aren't doing, how they didn't take the trash out, how they should interact with the kids more than being on video games or watching TV. Judgment says they should do something else or they're doing it wrong. Grace says they know exactly what they should be doing. They're doing it right for them. Grace remembers, I don't know what's best for them. Now, when our thoughts ruminate on the negative, especially with our kids, we feel the judgment and then we say negative things to them and they can sense our doubt in them, our lack of confidence. And I know it can be easy to sit and think they aren't working towards their potential, but we really don't know. It feels better to stop the negative ruminating and just say, I don't know why they're doing whatever. Also with our children, it's easy to fill those gaps with thoughts comparing them to other people or to each other. Grace-filled thoughts for them don't do any comparing. Grace and compassion find all the ways that your children have their unique qualities to accomplish what they are here to accomplish. Recently, I had to really work on my thoughts about one of my children. My thoughts were full of doubt, worry, and finding all the ways that they weren't measuring up. I noticed it and I wanted to change it because I didn't like how it felt. And I noticed I was treating them in a way that reflected this worry and doubt. And I knew they could sense it. I filled my thoughts with this. This child has been created exactly so they can learn what they need to learn. I also thought over and over, I can't wait to see how they grow and learn. I can't wait to see how they grow and learn. And I also reminded myself they are doing their best. And there are a lot of things I don't see them doing that I know that I would be proud of. Now, I coached a lot over the last few months as part of Jody Moore's Be Bold private membership. And inevitably, multiple times a week, a wife would come complaining about her husband not doing something at home or being on video games or their phone too much and not doing what she wanted him to do with the family. Now, the thing is, the husband didn't feel that annoyance. It's the wife that feels the annoyance. So she wants him to help, and on top of that, she fills herself with annoyance that she isn't even present with her kids. In every case, she thought he should be doing something else. But in the end, she ended up doing something 
that she thought she shouldn't be doing either. Y'all, this is the thought that catches us filling in these gaps with judgment that this other person should be this way, that they should do this, that they shouldn't be doing what they're doing, that they should give a different gift, they should pay for this, or that they should put the kids to bed at this time. Why do we want people to be different? It's usually because it's an expectation we have, and for some reason, our expectations of family tend to expand like Thanksgiving Day pants. Often it's because we know more about their lives, and then we start passing judgment. But imagine just loving these people for who they actually are, loving and filling the gaps between how they show up and these high expectations with understanding. Isn't that more motivating? Doesn't that feel better? I was coaching a client recently on her relationship with her mother-in-law. She really wishes that she was different and her mind has created this mental file folder of all of her shortcomings. Now this relationship she has with her mother-in-law in her mind was so full of judgment and superiority that she avoided a lot of interaction with her. After a few weeks of us focusing on this relationship, she came suddenly to a session, a changed person. Now, we had made lists of all the ways that her mother-in-law is wonderful, which was helpful, but the biggest change came when we spent time wondering how she really is doing her best, how her past experiences have actually shaped her. My client came to this session with overwhelming empathy and compassion. She saw her mother-in-law more like herself than she ever had. She had never wanted to like identify with her to find the similarities, but the change came when she saw how alike they were, how she has similar weaknesses and how grateful she has been for the unconditional love that she feels she's gotten from her mother-in-law. It was like a hundred pound blanket was lifted from my client and it all happened within her own mind by filling the gap with grace and empathy and connection. I know this will be a very different holiday for her. Now, often our judgment and opinions are based on speculations we have, assumptions we've made about other people. And when our brain doesn't have details, it fills in the gaps with negative information. Please always remember that when our brain doesn't have details or data, it fills it in with negative stories. And suddenly our brain thinks that these assumptions we have are true. But what if we're wrong? We have to question assumptions we make about people, and we only have responsibility to make sure we're making the best choices for ourselves. We can't carry responsibility of other people's lives for them. Now, why does it seem so easy to run other people's lives and we're actually stumbling over our own potholes? Kind of funny, huh? I remember when I really internalized this thought, other people are doing the best they can. Like, really started saying that over and over and just decided that that would be my default assumption. I think it was when I was really overwhelmed trying to get my sons through their Eagle rank in Boy Scouts. I was very easily frustrated and had several negative relationships in my mind with people. And I realized I was the one creating more negativity. I was the one making this experience less than enjoyable. What if I just assume everyone was doing their best and I focused on what I could do to make things go smoother? I suddenly started finding solutions to problems and saw how little things would go in our favor. Now, I love how in my church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, we take turns doing all of the different jobs or responsibilities in the church and we don't pick them. Leaders ask us to do them and we can then accept or not if we want to do that. But we learn by doing things that don't always come naturally to us. And we all get turns so we get to see what it's like in another person's shoes. And by doing this for decades and doing it in so many different jobs, I've grown to have such an appreciation for how hard seemingly simple tasks or events can be. But more than that, I've learned how people with incredibly varying skill sets can do things and my job is to have grace for them. My job is to assume that they're doing the best they can and not judge or criticize them. I wasn't this way decades ago. I've had to grow into this and this feels so much better. I'll find myself slip back into filling negative gaps and then I'll realize, wait, this person is doing 
things their way. It's my job to be kind and understanding and compassionate. Isn't that the best gift to give this person? And in reality, I get to feel those emotions. So I also get this gift of grace for myself, which feels good. Now, probably the biggest effect this change from judgment to grace produces on ourselves is an increase in our own self-esteem and self-worth. We stop judging ourselves as harshly. We start giving grace to our own shortcomings. I find grace for my husband when he wants to watch TV at night, when I remember the times that I just want to veg out and relax and disconnect. I find grace for my own yelling and temper tantrums when I patiently and calmly respond to one of my children being angry. It's like this cycle in our minds. When we think less harshly of others, we think less harshly of ourselves. And this is this amazing cycle to get into. Because we're human, y'all, we are just like everyone else. I used to get so mad at my daughter's messy room until I realized my closet isn't exactly neat and tidy. Here's the thing too. Filling the gaps with judgment blocks our connection to other people. Now think on that. We want to connect with other people and it starts with our relationship with them in our minds. The same with our relationship and connection to ourselves. We disconnect when we can't accept our humanness with compassion. It's a daily practice to just say, I did my best. Even though dinner was a frozen pizza and the laundry isn't near done and my son was on the Xbox instead of finishing homework, it's really going to be okay. I can try again tomorrow. We all can. I'd rather sit in grace, love, and connection than judgment, shame, and guilt. Grace allows people to grow, progress, and change. And judgment keeps us stuck. Now, people are going to let us down. We then get to decide what we want to make that mean, how we respond. We're also going to let ourselves down. Can we make that mean that we're normal and human? Or are we going to spin and let it go? out of proportion. Okay, one last thought before I go. Probably my favorite thought to get myself out of focusing on someone else and why they are the way they are is to ask myself, who do I want to be? So instead of wondering why my children can't get over certain struggles, I ask, who do I want to be as their mother right now? Instead of criticizing everything going on outside of me, I say, who do I want to be? Since that's the only thing I have control over. It makes so much more sense for me to focus on that. And the more grace and kindness I show to others in my thoughts, the more self-love I have for myself in my strengths and shortcomings, because I also am not always filling the cup to my highest expectations. Okay, that's it for today. Make sure you are in my Facebook group, Lose Weight and Gain Confidence with Heidi. In there, I give quick video tips and lessons. Lots of women are planning to make this a very healthy holiday, and it's awesome. We're doing it together. Reach out to me if you ever have questions. When the group coaching starts in January, I'm only going to have very limited spots for private one-on-one coaching packages. If you want personalized help going through all of these topics, sign up for a free consult call on HeidiBenjaminson.com. Let your children see you change and grow. You've always hired coaches for them. Now it's time for you to have a coach and I'd be honored to be yours. Have a great week.